Today on The Breakfast, a high level of electronic combat readiness is apt to win the fight against insecurity, external aggression and other threats to national peace with the brewing attacks across the country. Also on The Breakfast, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN and the Bankers Committee have enjoined traders in Cross River State, among others, to embrace e naira and other electronic payment channels in the system. And don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspapers, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's beautiful. Uh, Wednesday morning and it's good to know that you have joined us trust you had a fantastic night rest probably on your way to work and in traffic and what have you we ask that you stay with us and uh, the lineup is quite interesting just so you know my name is Messi Ebopo good morning now we start off with the conversation that's making the rounds in different parts uh, whether be it in Lagos but of course the stories in Lagos but I don't think that it will be limited to Lagos because the person in question is very popular. So you talk about the social media influencer and what have you. Uh, you can't limit this particular story, you know, to Lagos. But this, the entire, the crux of the matter has to do with cyberbullying and what the law says and the fact that, you know, an influencer, it's involved in all of this. So uh, a quick one to all, all that has happened is that the federal high court sitting in Lagos yesterday granted bail to social media influencer, I told you before, Blessing Okoro. She's also been known as Blessing CEO for the alleged cyber bullying. Now, the Nigerian police force had a reign Okoro, who, uh, Blessing Okoro, who's popularly known as Blessing CEO before the just, uh, Justice Yelim Bogoro of the Federal High Court on six count bordering on alleged cyber bullying libel uh, for existing, exhibiting on censored movie, uh, that's basically it. The Council for Blessing filed that particular bail application before Justice Tijani Ringim of the Federal High Court in Lagos on her behalf. Uh, however, the court had granted Blessing CEO bail in absence of opposition. Regarding bail condition, the pleas urged the court to use its discretion. I'd like to say her discretion. So... In all of this, that the court decided to use a discretion was that uh, she was admitted to 10 million naira bail each with two shorties in like sum. So you're going to have two shorties in like sum, 10 million naira, and what have you. But uh, reports say that she's going to be, you know, there. She's going to be remanded up until May. Now, let's even get to the crux of the conversation. Don't forget that this is actually still in court, and so it's sub is, I mean, you can't begin to talk about the merits of this conversation so you don't preempt the court or, you know, preempt what will happen. Uh, the police prosecutor have, however, said, and in all of this, these are some of the issues why she was arrested, uh, arraigned, and, of course, bail has been granted, is that... In a piece of proof of information which was filed before the court, it says that Okoro Blessing of uh, Lekki, she lives in Lagos, apparently, on October 16, 2022, intentionally sent messages using her Instagram handle at Official Blessing CEO to bully and threaten and harass one Flasha Day Samuel, also known as Mama Jazz, a younger sister to the late Bimbo uh, Ubona. Right, and uh, so the police also accused the blogger of using her Instagram handle at uh, official blessing CEO to harm the reputation of Olasha Day Samuel, among others, uh, and the late Bimbo by exposing them to hatred, contempt, and ridicule. Uh, accusing also, she was also accused of exhibiting a film and a video work titled Sweet and Sour without a censorship and certificate. Uh, without holding a license, which was supposed to be issued by the National Film and Video Censors Board. So, however, the prosecutor for that identified some of the messages the blogger had sent, uh, you know, to this person. Let's ask Mama Jazz where her father is. Uh, if you follow this particular story, uh, 
you would understand is the IVD story, okay? So I remember I saw this, where is her father? Your father had the same issue with the mother, Ebele, and ran away, you know, for his dear life. IVD's crime was that he was not man enough to run away. The family of late Bimbo is, of, uh, is after IVD's properties and life. Uh, I want you to know that if you follow the Bimbo story, we can't bring you, you know, to speed. But if you have followed the story, this was some of the response, especially her elder sister, Mama Jazz Bimbo. I think you are, you know, I think is well known uh, in Lagos and it's a not hidden fact that even in your estate, Bimbo is violent. Everybody knows how she breaks bottle on her husband's head on a daily basis. Bimbo killed herself and has always wanted to kill herself, right, from childhood. Evidence is loading all the voice notes and evidence will be on your YouTube and Facebook. You know, subscribe. She she wrote all of this. I will ask Mama, uh, you know, Mama Jas, the late Bimbo sister, a few questions. Where is uh, Seek in your, you talked about the attempts in your sister. She died. Are you owing your late sister 18 million? Did she block you before she, she died? Do you even like your sister's children? Answer this question because... Oh, no. I, I'm feeling very depressed and tired, you know, trying to read all of this this morning. But I'll cut it off. If you follow this story where Blessing CEO and IVD was, you know, very prominent, certain bimbo had died following a report that, you know, she was in a domestic or abusive relationship. And, you know, you ask yourself, what's the correlation? What's the correlation between Blessing and IVD and bimbo that had died? I mean, how can you just wake up and just be involved in another man's story, uh, basically? So, but the police actually told the court that the offense that the defendant and the accused, uh, we need to look at that, committed was in contradiction to section 24, subsection 2A and subsection 1 of the Cyber uh, Crime Act, Prohibition and Prevention Act of uh, 2015, and section 375 of the Criminal Code Act. Uh, that also reported, there was also a report that it also contravened section 33 of the, uh, the Film Act, that's the NFVCBD Act of 2004, where she put out a movie without getting the license and censor. But so this is my take on this particular issue because, I mean, I probably have to put out this one here. I think that we, we have lost our humanity as a people, right? We, we literally have lost that. Now, and I'm, I'm trying to ask myself, Blessing CEO, the IVD story, Bimbo, what's, what's the correlation? Why are you in another man's business so much? I mean, what exactly is it? Are you the attorney? Are you the defense counsel? Why could you be so involved and, you know, putting out statement when you have someone who has died? Uh, you can't even... It's a lot of pain to grapple with. And so just imagine that you have someone who's lost a loved one and then these are some of the statements that you begin to put out. At, at what point? What's the correlation? What's the connection? How can you be so involved? But then maybe we live in a climb where we haven't really paid attention to the laws that we have. But you also need to understand that uh, there are laws and rules that govern our behavior as a people. And we can't continue to act, you know, erratic, indiscriminately. We can't continue to act without, uh, you know, the fact that understanding that we're humans and what have you. So I have seen different uh, conversations following CEO, uh, blessing CEO, because she's quite influential. I mean, uh, she has a presence on social media and that's why it's, it's uh, the talk, you know, in different parts of uh, the social media space, you know, with her action. But I say, whatever's going on, we need to take a breather and always understand that we're dealing with human beings at every point in time. We also need to, you know, uh, to take a breather, understand that these persons are humans and you, you can't just go all out. Someone has lost, you know, a loved one. That's a mother. That's a sister. That's also, you know, a friend. You know, she could be anyone. I mean, we're not just limiting. I'm not limiting this particular story to being born out. I'm saying that when someone, um, you know, lose a loved one, you have someone who's died. I think it's just important that you, you, you just be there and uh, and be sensitive to some extent. So I, I think that what's actually lacking for blessing CEO what actually happened because some people think that she's she's having a bit, you know, a, a taste of her own medicine. And whatever she's getting right now, it should be commensurate to the pain that she has caused, 
you know, members of the family. I just think that in the course of us doing our jobs, being influencers and being whatever it is that we have to be as a people, we also cannot take out the fact that we're dealing with human beings. We can't, you know, remove that other aspect of us. We're human, first of all, before we're any other stuff. And then you have to begin to think about what your actions would be. I mean, your, the comments that you're making. How would he, you know, leave the other party? These people are mourning. And he, just going ahead to say all of these things. Do you live with them? Do you have the facts? Do you know what actually transpired? I mean, how, 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 how so do you have so much information about a situation? These are some of the concerns that a lot of Nigerians have raised. But we need to move away from that quickly because... Next on the top trending, what a lot of Nigerians are talking about on social media and off social media spaces, the fact that there's been uh, an unfortunate incident with kidnap of school children in Kaduna. The State Police Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Aruan, confirmed that uh, in a statement, the students of government secondary school, Awan Day Secondary School to be precise, were kidnapped. That was on Monday and today's Wednesday, so we're looking at you know three days or uh, two days from now, they were kidnapped, and the State Commissioner for Internal Security and Homeland Affairs had also confirmed that statement of the students who were, you know, kidnapped, and uh, the entire social media space is on talking about this. The Commissioner explained that they didn't really state the exact location where this uh, incident had taken place, but of course, it also agreed to the fact that, yes, there was a kidnap. But um, details are, 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 and reports are saying that these students were taken away, you know, abruptly. It, it's very unfortunate. We know how we have grappled with, uh, you know, a story of students who just went to school. And you ask yourself what exactly is the crime in going to school. And just while they were in school, they were, you know, taken and uh, they were kidnapped. And a lot has actually happened with them. So, yes, uh, it's, it's pretty unfortunate. Uh, it's so saddening. And we're having this report shortly after the, the elections because it felt like everything has doused down. Uh, we seem to have been in control of all of the issues that are going on, uh, but that's not the case. Well, that's so much we can take this morning on our top trending. We take a quick break. When we return, we'll be looking at the front pages of our national dailies. Please stay with us. Good morning.